Well, hello there, uh, good morning uh, to you all. So, uh, I come with one more Bleach review uh, for chapter uh, 560 uh, titled Rages at Ringside. And, well, I must say that uh, after what did happen on the last uh, chapter that kind of disappointed me uh, mainly because the the situation with the uh, oracle and Ashfold uh, I do enjoy this chapter um, a lot it was a fun chapter I mean it was a fun chapter um, and basically is all centered uh, uh, between the mask, the masculine, uh, the dwarf called James, uh, and then the appearance of uh, Kensei and Rose. Oh, uh, but um, basically, uh, at the start of the chapter, or in the first part of the chapter, we see that. Uh, Mask indeed he is going to the place or to the spot where Rukia and Wenji have landed, but then apparently Zagi is still conscious and he tries to stop uh, Mask, but he gets pummeled again and. When Mask is, I suppose, going to deal the, the finishing blow, is kind of stopped by Kensei that appeared. And uh, Kensei, as usually, um, Kensei is a fighting type, uh, so he kind of criticizes um, Izagi also hinted that he completed his Bankai training because he is disappointed on Izaki being taken out so easily and but at the beginning Mask does not want to stay around but then Rose appears and can say as usual uh, following his own personality uh, straight, goes straight to Bankai and begins attacking Mask and basically beats the crap out of Mask and I was okay that was going well and, and Mask does not have any chance he's beaten and beaten and beaten uh, by uh, Kensei then he is sent flying away and then Izagi kind of regains consciousness and kind of warns Kensei and Rose that they need to take out the dwarf James first and but at the same time he sends the warning we see a huge shadow of mask appearing and basically blowing can say and rules away <coughs> and uh, then we have the presentation of mask I always uh, think that uh, the S on the mask uh, standard for strength but after all it stands for superstar and from what I understand from his explanation the little one the dwarf basically is kind of the power boost of mask and basically if the little one is kind of shearing up mask or something like that it's kind of like his emotions go straight to mask and make him achieve a power boost at the same time so that was quite a um, strange power let's say but uh, well, oh, um, 
the quincy powers by definition are all kind of strange but uh, that was that was interesting and in the least it solved the question why the dwarf was there and what was his use and apparently basically the dwarf james is the power ignition of mask so that was uh, interesting uh, and it's good to see that it kind of makes sense um, thinking on the powers of mask let's say so it was good and also i also think that uh, it was probably probable that mask uh, will fight range i don't know if uh, this blow already put uh, can say and rose out of commission but if this final blow of mask or by surprise uh, did take down uh, can say and rose that will be pretty disappointing because after thinking a, a little about it i do think that probably the best matchup to mask is indeed can say uh, because mask is a luchador uh, is a fighting uh, type guy and can say uh, is also a fighting type guy and in the is bankai are a fighting type uh, gender bankai so it kind of makes uh, pretty sense that the can say and mask do face off each other but uh, if this final blow of mask did basically blow away uh, can say and rose and render them incapable of continue fighting then i think that's probable that the mask could go and take down range and rookie and then he could eventually fight range perhaps but i'm hoping that uh, this blow was not enough to kind of uh, put the rose and can say out of commission uh, because it was it will be pretty disappointing because we already have Chinchi putting out of commission in the list for the moment uh, by Bambietta explosion now if can say and rose are now taken away or take down by this blow it's kind of so the visor supposedly are more powerful than the average captain because they do have all powers and they add uh, an hundred years to train with that power so it's kind of disappointing because if um, Kubo indeed puts um, can say Andros out of commission it, it will be kind of disappointed because it will put the visors into the weakest slot of the captains of the group asserting and that was kind and that will be kind of disappointing because i do suppose that since they have all abilities or they can access some of these all abilities they should have more power than the average captain so It kind of gives the feeling that uh, Aether or Akubu is reserving the visors to more important fights or he is kind of trolling the visors and that was and that is kind of disappointing uh, because I actually I do want to see them fight I do want to see their powers uh, how they work what they do and such uh, and I do wanted to see uh, how their bank eyes works I was kind of glad that uh, in this chapter Kubo did have the time to explain a little bit about the powers of the bank eye of Kensei because the, the last time that we did see Kensei using his bank eye was releasing it uh, fighting in the fake character town arc against uh, Wonder Rice, I think, and we never see him again. The fight take out uh, 
or happens off panel so that was kind of um, at the at that time we did see his release form but we never see how her power his powers work now we have a small explanation about how the powers of Kensei work and basically is a fighting type power so I'm kind of looking forward that I do hope that the Kubo do not, does not draw the visors any longer unless he is reserving them to other fights in the future or more important fights maybe but uh, at this point uh, in the story the visors were seriously trolled over by a Kubo and that was mm, hard to digest let's say on that way but uh, returning to Mask well uh, his power it's interesting uh, now I will assume that uh, for him to take out Izagi, uh, Ikaku and Yumishika that are on captain level, apparently. Uh, in the list Yumishika apparently is because Ikaku already has a Bankai. In this chapter, uh, can say kinda confirms that Izagi does have one. So I will assume that Yumishika in the meantime also achieved the Bankai eventually. So and uh, we kind of understand from what Izagi warns can say apparently they did try to fight back against Mask but apparently the presence of the dwarf James kind of put the scales on his side and gave him a power boost that enabled him to beat the three down but I do wanted to wish to see that fight I do hope that the anime returns and this fight that apparently take off uh, or happened off panel uh, could be animated or show us because it will be interesting but okay now on the predictions for next week hmm well i do have um, two hypotheses and all are related with this chapter. I don't think that we will see Rukia and Renji in the list in the next week chapter. I don't think so. I think that next week will be about Mask the Mask Line, probably. And Aether, uh, Kensei, and Rose uh, are not taken out by his blow and start fighting against Mask or in the worst case scenario in a way we will eventually could see Rukia and Renji but at the end of the chapter when Mask goes to their location and kinda his fight with them will initiate those are my two uh, predictions for next week that could happen uh, if we will see another fight uh, taking place i don't know i honestly don't know um, it will be good if we did learn about what happened what the hell happened to Bambieta and if uh, it's confirmed if Kangdu and BG9 were in fact killed all points that in that way but it will be good to have some kind of confirmation and also I do wanted to learn so <coughs> Kengdu and uh, BG9 were in the last chapter, they were already in the Silver Palace. So, when they, are, they were kind of taken out by the attack of Toshiro and Soiform, and if both 
uh, Siphon probably, if on Aeda did kind of after the fight, he kind of escaped with her. That's the most probably uh, likely scenario to the to have happened, but in regards of Toshiro, if Toshiro and Matsumoto were taken out at the end of the fight, uh, and if Kangdu was in the last chapter in the palace, so who would retrieve Kangdu? And if someone was going to that location and retrieve Kangdu and BG9 to be judged, uh, and eventually, if Toshiro Matsumoto, or eventually even Siphon, were there unconscious, <coughs> were they? <coughs> could they have been finished off by other? Or they were withdraw from the location of the battle, and then the one that was, or that was, did go there, retrieving King Du and PG9, uh, only found them defeated um, that also deserves some kind of explanation in my opinion but nonetheless this is my bleach review um, I like this chapter this chapter was funny uh, it was good um, uh, more good or a lot more good than the previous one uh, on the overall of the chapter so that's it this is my review for bleach 560 hope you enjoy uh, thanks for watching and see you soon